All right, welcome back to part two of Polar Functions here. Uh, last time I had like a little Polar Bear and Polar Express. Check this bad boy out here. Can you figure that out? Yeah, that's a pull air. 404 air, pull air. Ooh, that's rough. Rough start right there. It gets better from here though. Let's go ahead and take a look at um, some other type of, so we did circles and roses. Uh, what are we gonna do here? In English, that looks like a limacon, but really that is a French word. It is a limaison. <laughs> Uh, that's what we're talking about here is limisons. So this is the general formula here of a plus or minus b cosine theta. I apologize to all native French speakers for my accent. Um, here we go. Let's take a look and see if I can graph them better than I can say them. So uh, here's the example right here we're going to start with. And last time we were kind of plotting points. And what I'd like to do today is kind of like, hey, what would it look like on the rectangular graph and the polar graph? We can do both. So on the rectangular graph, remember, this is our angle down here. And this is our R up here. And then we can graph it in polar mode as well. So I went ahead and, and hooked you up. 3 plus 3 cosine x. We know the midline's at 3. We know it's a, a cosine with amplitude of 3. So it looks something like that. So previously, we were just looking at points. So like an easy point to start with is 0 makes 6. Cosine of 0 makes 6. I love cosine. It's starting over here. That's really nice. What are some other cool points? Well, I know at pi over 2, it's at 3. So at pi over 2, I'm at 1, 2, 3. And then at pi, I'm at zero. That's a great point. So that's the pi direction, but there is zero right there. And then I'm back to three at pi over, I'm sorry, three pi over two. And then when I finish out up there, so those are like some nice, special, easy, the five points there, but that's not enough for the graph. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. All right, here I am in uh, GeoGebra, and I will, I will post this link in the description because it's super cool. Um, basically over here on the left side is the rectangular graph, like I had shown you on there. And then this is their polar coordinate. And I'm doing that first example, the three plus three cosine theta. So you can see the rectangular equation, the polar equation, there's a lot going on here. What's cool about this is it's going to, we're going to watch it graph. So we're going to watch it on the rectangular. So we knew it starts at six and we're going to watch it go decrease and then come back up and then see what happens in polar land. So let's just sit back, enjoy this. There it goes, drawing it. So just so we're cool here, because it is going pretty quickly here. You can see how um, this is decreasing over here, and you can see how my R value is kind of shrinking, and I'm following the angle along. So right now, theta is 1.1, so I'm kind of getting close to that 1.57, that uh, half a pi right there. And then you can see, watch where it hits zero here. Let's see if we can see that happen, if I can pause it right there. Coming around, coming around, I'm gonna hit zero, so boom. Ooh, pretty close, pretty close. And you can see the blue is the positive, and the red is the negative. Not that I'm going to get negative, but you can see which way it's pointing. Let's finish out the second half of this cycle here. And there we go. Taking off again, and he's coming around, going up there, maxing out, and then coming back down. Boom. And it finished up at 2 pi. So there's a shape. There's that cardioid shape. That's super cool. Okay. So can we kind of connect the dots now that we saw what it was? This is going to be rough. That's okay, though. We've got this cardioid shape here like this, and it looks like a heart. It's so adorable. Uh, it is rough. So what causes this to happen? This is, happens when A and B are the same number. So we've got A equals B. It makes the heart-shaped thing. It's adorable because it's cosine. It opens up right. Awesome. So down below it, I went ahead and showed you. I had some pre-graphed ones here where I can see like, hey, uh, positive cosine opens right, negative cosine opens left. Positive sign opens up, negative sign opens down. So we're always kind of assuming A and B are just positive numbers. And we're going to throw that negative in front um, or, or leave it as a positive in there to flip it around the different spots. What else is cool about this? The three and the three make the six, so that's the max distance away. This kind of absolute value of three and three. Even if it's subtraction, it'd still be the three and three is six. Awesome, moving on. What about this bad boy? So this is called a dimple cardioid. And what do you notice about here with A and B? Well, it looks like A is bigger than B. So let's explore what happens when A is bigger than B. Again, on the rectangular graph, here's theta. I went ahead and hooked you up and graphed it for you, but it's just a midline of five and a cosine with amplitude of three. What do I notice about this one? Well, I notice it starts at eight. Love cosine. Cosine zero starts all the way out here at eight. So I'm going to put a dot. Uh, it never hits zero though. You see how it's always positive. So I've got these special dots going around and I can plot these real quick. Uh, pi over two, I'm up at one, two, three, four, five, just to get a rough idea. Pi, I'm at what? Two. So this time I'm actually in the pi direction two. And then 3 pi over 2, I'm at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in this direction. And then I'm back to where I started. So that's the rough idea, but I really need to see the shape. So let's go over there and check this bad boy out. 
Okay, here we go. So I switched over to five plus three cosine theta over here. You can see what that did to my trig function. It, it moved it way above the x-axis, so I don't have any zero touches. Let's watch this bad boy graph. So turn them on here, or see if we can animate that. There we go. So just so we're cool, you can watch them going around um, as theta is going positive. And then I'm gonna come in at half a pi. Make sure you're tracking over here. So I'm at half a pi. I'm at half a pi over here, right at that midline, which is one of the special points. Going to my lowest I get right here. So that's the closest I'll ever to be to the pole. And then I'm getting kind of uh, farther away from the pole as I go around. And you can see a little dimple, that dimpled cardioid. You can see it right there uh, as it traces along right there. That is so super cool. I could do this all day. Um, so here we go. So I'm gonna try to draw this the best I can. It's gonna be rough, but it kind of flattens out here. So it's got a little dimple in it and then it comes back. Oh my gosh, that's really rough. Now you're not gonna have to draw these. You're just gonna have to kind of match them. Um, but Key takeaways here, five plus three is eight. So I know I'm gonna start out here at eight. It's a dimple, and how far does that dimple go out? Well, it's the difference of the two. It goes out one, two. That's where the dimple's gonna be. Uh, and then we can kind of recognize it there. Another big thing is when I draw this, the midline, it never touches zero, so I know it never can touch zero. So not too bad. Awesome, kind of a follow-up question. So what if I gave you this? So I recognize that, yes, this is a, a one-loop cardioid here, or I'm sorry, one-loop limousin and then, um, or a dimpled cardioid here. So can you do the equation? Well, first of all, does it open up or down or left or right? Well, it's an up or down, it's an up. So that gets rid of cosine. So right off the bat, when I'm matching, I can get rid of cosine. And then I'm looking for the positive one for sine because it's opening up. And again, I can see that it goes to uh, six. So it's gotta be something that adds up to six. So four and two is six. And then the dimples at two, that's the difference of the two. So that's kind of the matching game you're gonna play is match those up. Now, some follow-up questions, and this is really something we're going to use next uh, section here, is what's going on with the function? Well, it's hard for me to tell over this domain pi over 2 to pi. So, I mean, I'm talking about, maybe I should highlight this bad boy. I'm talking about pi over 2 to pi, so this over here. So, yes, we could try to figure out what's going on, um, but it gets weird here. So, I want to know, is the function positive or negative, and is it increasing or decreasing? So it's actually easier to use the rectangular instead of the polar. And I'm gonna graph it from, uh, well, let's say this is pi over two to pi, and this is gonna be a really rough sketch here, three pi over two, and then two pi. So our normal little graph here. And then let's throw the midline in there. So I know the midline of this equation here is what? It's four plus two sine uh, theta. So I know up here at four, I've got this midline going through something like this. And then I'm talking about a sine curve. Sine starts on it. It's going to go to above. It's going to come back. It's going to go to below. And then it's going to come back. So my five special points. Let's draw this bad boy in. So I'm making a really rough sketch here. And now let's answer these questions. So is the function positive? So remember, we're talking about r equals this function. So we're talking about the r value, the radius of this thing. So is it positive or negative? Well, is it a, it's above everything. This whole function is always positive. So this is always positive here because at pi over two to pi c, it's going from here to here. So that kind of matches the shaded region up here. That's what's going on. Now, is the function increasing or decreasing? Well, what's going on? And then let me get my, I love that highlighter. Love the highlighter. See how it's going downhill here? So it's positive going downhill, so it's decreasing. So it's getting smaller. The R, R value is getting smaller. So I can say that function is decreasing. So yes, I gave you a polar. You're gonna to have to graph a little rectangular. Then you can answer these questions. I think it's a lot easier. Awesome. All right, one more time. You may have guessed it. So we've done A equals B. We've done A is greater than B. What do you notice here? What about when A is less than B? So that can happen. And this makes our last uh, Le Maison. Um, it's gonna be an inner loop one. And check out what do you notice maybe right off the bat about the rectangular. We're going into the negatives, baby. Here we go. We're going uh, underneath the x-axis. So let's just plot the key points here. So I know cosine is going to give me that 4. I know pi over 2 is going to give me that 1. And then now I get a negative. So what? this is weird. When pi is at negative 2, here's the pi direction, but I'm going opposite negative 2. Oh, man, I'm back over here. That's kind of different. And then 3 pi over 2 straight down is 1. And then I'm back finishing at four. What in the world is this gonna look like? Let's go over to our GeoGebra and see. All right, here's the one I'm really excited for, this inner loop here. And you can kind of see it traces the pre-outline for you, but check it out. We're finally hitting a negative here. So let's, let's really watch what happens with the negative. This is super cool. So I'm gonna start it up. So I'm cruising around like I was. R is getting smaller, smaller, smaller. 
check it out, I'm gonna pause it right here. So I hit the zero point, you can see I hit zero and I'm actually going negative, which is the red direction over here. So I'm actually going in the negative direction, but the angle is still over here going towards pi. So as I go towards pi, this is so huge, I'm going towards pi is theta, I'm in the negatives right here, so my angle's on a negative. That's what causes the loop. Let's just enjoy that. Boom, so I'm all negative right there, negative, negative, smaller negative now. Now I'm getting less negative as I'm getting closer back to zero, so I'm getting, that's gonna be huge. Less negative, boom, I'm at zero, and then I come around there again, and then I did it again. That's cool, it's so cool, I may wanna do it again. So as I come around, whoosh, there's that negative, that's the key when I switch from the positive to the negative, and then I've got it. Wow, that's fun. Okay, let's try to draw this bad boy here, so it's gonna be rough. It's coming through, it does hit zero there, then it loops around, then it comes back through zero again, then it loops around. Hey, that's not too bad. I was expecting way worse than that. That, that turned out okay. So uh, it's got that inner loop. What are the key features here? Well, I know one and three is four, so you can see my max distance is four. Uh, I know three minus the one is the two, so that's where the inner loop goes there. So some key features when we go to match it up, uh, pretty cool there. All right, here's the follow-up onto that. So this is a, some kind of inner loop uh, limison here. So we're gonna say, what's going on? So I see a max distance of seven. I see an inner loop of three. So I hope I'm dealing with something that does that. Yeah, sure, five and two. Then I'm looking left or right. This is left, which I know is cosine, so it's not gonna be any of these signs. So it's gonna be this bad boy here. Uh, five and two is seven, two and five, subtract them is a three. Awesome. Then let's go rectangular on this bad boy. So I've got this rough sketch. So I know my midline's where? Up here at two. So I've got this dotted line up here at two. And let's go ahead and put in our, our uh, so we've got usually pi and two pi. And let's go ahead and plot our points here. So it's cosine and it's negative. It's gonna start below the curve, oh my goodness. And then where is it going to end? It's going to end below the curve. In the middle, it's going to be above the curve. So in the middle of the middle, we've got these. And again, this is just a rough idea of what's happening. So we've kind of got this bad boy going on. And we can get real precise and see where it equals zero if we wanted to, if we needed those points. For this section, we'll be Coolio without it. So I'm looking at pi over 2. I'm looking at this interval here from pi over 2 to pi. So again, I'm kind of looking at that same... Oh, but this is trickier. I know I'm over here from pi. I mean, here we are. We're talking about this region over here. So, oh my goodness. This is where it gets confusing. So, yeah, I know I'm in this quadrant, but I don't know which part of the graph I'm talking about, this outside loop or this inside loop. So, that's where having this nice uh, picture below is really going to help us out. So, is the function positive or negative between pi over 2 and pi? So, let's go down here to oh, I, I, pi over 2 is going to be like right here up to here. So maybe I should I should have put those intervals in there. Sorry about that. We can add them now. It's, it's okay. So there's the pi over 2. So I'm looking at this region from here to here. So is this positive or negative? It's above the, x, the axis, so it's going to definitely be positive. Is the function going up or down? It's going up here. It's increasing. So r is getting bigger. So I'm going to say something like this. So that's how we use rectangular to hook up those answers. I couldn't really tell over here. I mean, okay, I, I knew it was this outer one. But, because uh, later on, the inner one comes in with those negatives. That's what's causing those negatives to come back in that quadrant. Excellent. So here are the formal rules. So you have them. Um, that's what I was talking about, how A and B are going to say are positive. Just uh, one of the things when we talk about the one loop limit song, we're going to say this ratio is actually between one and two. We don't want it too big. Um, so there's the rules for you. All right, let's see if we can describe these polar functions down here. So we can uh, memorize these rules. So if you want to look at it and say, oh, yeah, A is less than B. A is less than B is an inner loop. That's cool, and you can just kind of memorize that and have it. But if you'd rather, instead of memorizing the rules, just think about, well, what's happening here? So if you think about the rectangular graph of 5 plus 7 sine, well, we know the midline's up here at 5, right? Got this little midline at Y equals 5. And then we got to think about, well, what is the trig function doing? So... I know it's sine, I know it goes up 7, it goes down 7, and see how it crosses. It's all about crossing uh, or touching the x-axis here. So because it does that, that's what's causing the inner loop, that negative feature. So if you can kind of remember that if I cross over, so if I graph this, and again, we're going to be more like matching and describing than actually graphing, but I know what? I know that I'm going to have this negative part causes that inner loop. 
I know it's a sign who likes to open up. So he's going to open up like a, a little heart here. And he's going to circle back and get that inner loop. Something like this. Also, some other interesting points. What's the maximum distance away? Well, you said them together 5 and 7 is 12. So I know this point is going to be 12 away. Also, the, the little loop is the difference of the two. So that's going to be 2 away there. Just to kind of help you match some things and see what's going on. All right, let's take a look at the next one here. So again, if you want to do the rule, you can say, oh yeah, A is bigger than B. And I'm not too worried about the sign in the middle right now, but A is bigger than 6. You can say, oh yeah, it's a dimple cardioid. That's cool. Or you can say, hey, let's just make a quick sketch on the rectangular coordinate system. And I know I've got this midline chilling up here at 8, like this. And I'm going to do a negative cosine curve around that. And it's only going down 6. So is it ever going to get to the x-axis? No, it never makes it. That's why it's not a true heart and then go past it, that's why you don't get the inner loop. So I get that little dimple or I get the one loop. So what would that look like polarly? Is that a word, polarly? Let's put it on the polar axis maybe. Uh, so I know it's going to be dimpled. Um, and I know it's cosine, which is right or left. In this case, it is going to open in the other direction. It's going to open left here. So let's draw this bad boy. So it, I know the dimple is going to be here at 2, and it's going to kind of dimple out. And come around like this. I love it. Dimple out. And it should look something like this. What are the key points here? Well, what's the max distance away? Well, 8 and 6, the absolute value is 14. That's going to be 14 away. And the difference of 2, that's going to be that point right there. Awesome. And how about the last one? This one's everybody's favorite here. It's pretty chill to recognize. You've got 6 and 6 are the same here. So again, you can just say, oh, they're the same. I know it's going to be the heart. Everybody loves the heart. Um, but let's just graph it so we can see what's going on. I get that midline up here at 6, and then it's a sine curve that has an amplitude of 6, so it goes up 6, it goes down 6, and see how it touches just one time, touches the heart, oh, it's adorable. Uh, let's see a touch over here on the polar axis. So what's happening here, it's a sine curve, so I know it's up or down, and I know it's positive, so it's going to just open up. So ideally, it starts here at the origin, that's that touching point right there, and then it comes around, whoosh, like this. Excellent. There it is right there. Uh, what are the key features here? We've got 6 and 6 is 12, so maximum is going to be 12 away. And then if you subtract them, I guess you get that 0 right there. And there is the, there's the heart right there. So you can memorize the formula. You can just know the midlines, however you want to do it, whatever floats your boat. As long as you're getting uh, matching these, then you're good to go. One last thing, we can't leave out Archimedes Spiral, which is pretty cool. Um, Check it out. So this is a special case when r equals theta and theta is a positive. So again, remember, this was theta and this was r. So they're the same. So pi over 2, you know, or, or pi, pi is 3.14. So see how this is 3.14? Uh, 3.14 divided by 2 is 1.57. So they're the same thing. So what happens over here? Let's take a look at the picture of this bad boy. All right, can we do the spiral here? So there's that flat line where the theta and r are the same. Um, let's see how this pans out here. So let's turn this on and see what happens. So as R, they're the same. As theta gets bigger, R gets bigger. So what does that cause? That causes you to slowly spiral your way away from the pole. So I'm always going away from that pole. And then this is going to stop at 2 pi, but you could keep that train rolling and just spiral out forever. Uh, interlet. <laughs> okay, so we know 0 is 0. We know pi over 2 is 1.57, so that's straight up. We know pi is 3.17, I'm sorry, 3.14. So 3 pi over 2 is like 4.7-ish. So 1, 2, 3, 4.7. And then back to 2 pi, which is 6.28, something like this. So there's a rough idea of that spiral. Whoop, there it is. Growing, growing, growing. You can stop there, but it keeps going forever and ever and expanding out. Oh my gosh, it's pretty rough looking. But that's it, man. Can you match these? Can you put them together using both rectangular? That's the whole idea. We're using our rectangular and our polar to solve these. Hopefully uh, this goes well for you on the practice and on the master check. Uh, peace out.